Welcome to Ecoho Couture. Today I'm going to talk to you about thimbles, which is one piece of equipment or tool that is crucial to couture sewing because we do a lot of hand sewing. Um, it protects our, our thimble finger and our thimble finger is actually our middle finger of whatever hand that you use. If you're right-handed, it'll go on your right hand. If you're left-handed, it'll go on your left hand, but it's on your middle finger. So I'm going to talk to you about all the different kinds of thimbles that are on the market um, and which ones that we use and what we would recommend and why. I'm going to show you three different categories of thimbles. There is a fourth, but I don't have an example to show you, but I will discuss it at the end of this little video. So these are the thimbles that you ought to be looking for. They are round, they have a closed top, because there are thimbles that have open tops. They need a closed top, they need to fit snugly on your um, middle finger, which is the finger that we use to push the needle through, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. And this one is brassed. This particular maker is um, from France, Bowen, and the reason I'm mentioning a name, because I won't do with the other ones, is this because this brand has several different sizes to choose from. They have about eight or nine sizes, and you can see there's a large size and a small size and the range in between. So this one is the one that I use and I wear, and you can see by the brass on there, I don't know if you can see it as closely, but on the one that I use, the brass is already wearing off, it's silvering, but that's okay. Um, that's not a problem. The other one here that I use quite a lot, my favorite, is a uh, stainless steel. And um, it has the dimpling on the side and on the top. I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. This one is made out of sterling silver and it has the dimpling down the side and on the top it has dimpling plus ridges. And this one I bought because I loved it, but it, um, it doesn't fit me quite right. So the way that it needs to fit, when you have it on your finger, you should not be able to feel the top of that with your the top of your finger, right? There, there should be some space there. If you have longer fingernails, and I keep my fingernails very short, um, you may find it a little bit more difficult, and you may find that trimming your nails a little bit shorter will help, because it's the most uncomfortable feeling in the world to have um, your fingertip continually hitting the top of your thimble when you're working. Okay, so that, oh, those are the ones I'm going to recommend, and I'm just going to put them over here for now. All right, so I'm going to show you another set. They look very, very similar, and, um, but there are some disadvantages to it. Okay, so this one here looks almost the same, almost the same as this one. Okay, the only difference being, and it's a huge difference, is that the dimpling on this one is shallower and there's not as many dimples and here they're a little bit deeper and there's and there's a finer patterning this one is not as functional as this one okay so this one is my favorite i'm going to put that back now this one again is um very similar okay so not too much different this one is one that i've used for years and years and years and it has saved my finger because I actually punctured it. Now, this puncture didn't come from an ordinary needle, obviously. It was from when I was working probably on leather, and I had to push through very, very hard. So had I not had a thimble on, that would have gone through my finger with the wrong end of the needle, and that hurts. Okay, so I do have callusing on this finger anyway, and the reason that you get a callus is that when you are sewing, you are pushing the needle through with this finger, okay? Now, when you wear a thimble properly, you are using the thimble to push that needle through the fabric. So that's the idea. And it protects your fingers from any damage, okay? Now, that is one set here. I'm going to put these aside. Now I'm going to talk about thimbles that I don't like so much and I'll tell you why. Here is one set of thimbles that are very, very inexpensive. They're gummy. You could almost eat them. 
but I wouldn't know. Don't they're made out of acrylic or polyester. They are very, very inexpensive. They're useful for very short short term projects and nothing that requires a lot of pressure. Okay, because you're gonna go right through them. I take these with me on workshops that I go to because I can give them away, um, kind of like you would give a business card away. Um, a lot of people that come to a workshop don't have thimbles, so I give them one of these. Here's two more thimbles that um, I don't like at all. This one, and this is probably the most inexpensive thimble in, on the market. Uh, you'll find them in, in uh, sewing stores everywhere. Um, there's not a lot of dimpling in it, and the dimples are very, very, very shallow. So they will not hold a needle in place at all, and it's too short. Um, in a pinch, again, you can use it, but you'll find after a while that you're constantly slipping, or the needle is slipping, so I don't like that. This one is, is rather a specialized thimble, and I don't use it very often, if at all. Um, First of all, it's too short and I can feel the top of it at the end of my finger already. The other thing about it is that it has this black area here, which is actually a magnet that's magnetized. So if you're sewing, it will pick up your needle so you don't get lost or your needle doesn't get lost. However, it turns out to be more annoying that it is helpful. And it also has this uh, deep, uh, hollow here just over the ridge and I don't know if you can kind of pick that up and that's annoying as well it's not very practical so I mean it's not an inexpensive thimble and I suppose it does have its uses but it's not one of my favorites okay now the, th the third kind of thimble I'm going to talk about are the ones that um, people buy and they bring you from their travels, their collector symbols. Okay, so some of them actually work. This one is also a sterling silver thimble. It's all tarnished. So I don't recommend using silver if you can avoid it because of the tarnishing that happens. The tarnish transfers onto fabric and the last thing you want to have is black marks on your fabric. As beautiful as they are, beautiful gifts and they're great reminders. I don't like to use them, but this one is actually functional. This one is functional as well. It is um, silver and um, it has a different type of dimpling pattern on it, but it actually does hold uh, or grasp the end of a needle if you are working with it. It is functional. Okay, but I find that um, because it's silver, it's going to uh, tarnish. Now here's a beautiful little thimble and it has um, this stone insets. Now this is also got some dimpling pattern at the top. It's sil or it was silver and <laughs> completely tarnished. Beautiful, but it has so many rough edges on it, it's going to get caught on your fabric every time that you uh, sew. So I'm going to put those away. Um, I mean, I'll bring more out here and uh, just to show you the different types of um, thimbles that you can buy for collectors. Again, here is when it has dimpling, it is metal. Um, it's rather clumsy, so put it on the shelf or in the cabinet. Another one is, these are all now made, well this one is, but this one, these are all made out of um, porcelain. This is a Wedgwood uh, thimble and it's not glazed as Wedgwood normally is not, but it's a beautiful um, art piece. But it's, again, totally impractical because of all the rough edges. These ones, as beautiful as they are, and they have the gold leaf on them, or the real gold, actually, they are not useful because they are so slippery and they're clumsy. And then there's this final one, which is beautifully done. It has a lot of enameling work, and it has the dimpling at the top. Again, gorgeous piece, but these are really meant for putting on the shelf and admiring. Okay, so back to the ones that you should be looking for are these that have very, very fine dimple patterns. They're deep, they're not rough. In spite of the fact that they're deep, they're not rough, they won't catch on fine fabric. This one again, um, I'll just show you. It goes on your middle finger and as you stitch, you push the needle through and you pick it up with your index finger and so on. 
Now, many of our students, when they come, they have never owned a thimble and, and they um, are resistant to wearing one because it is rather awkward at the beginning if you've never worn a thimble. And um, so wearing a thimble on your middle finger and learning how to stitch by hand is all new to so many people. But it is really the basis, it's the foundation of couture sewing and uh, we do a, an awful lot of handwork by sewing by hand and uh, so it needs to be, become as natural as wearing a pair of glasses. In fact, sometimes when I am sewing and I'm working on a project and I have my thimble on, I won't even take it off to use a pair of scissors. And it gets to the point where sometimes I'm looking for where I left my thimble and I just see it's still on the end of my finger. Okay, so the one thing that does also happen when you're wearing a thimble is that your finger does start to um, conform to the shape of the thimble and it becomes narrower. So you may want to have one size um, up and one size down so that you can have this nice snug fit on your finger because um, sometimes your fingers swell. All right, so the, the fourth type of um, thimble that I want to talk about is a tailor's thimble and it, it goes around your finger but it's only covered on one side like a band over it or it has uh, the, the, the shape all around but it's an open top. Okay, so those they make specifically for tailoring. Now I've never found the need to have that type of thimble when this one will work perfectly well for couture sewing and for tailoring. Okay, so these are the ones that you should be looking for. These are the ones that um, are there for a quick fix if you need to. This is a magnetic one. Uh, this one is, is bad. Don't get that. Don't get that. And then we have also our collector thimbles. So I hope that gives you some um, idea of what you ought to be looking for. And by the way, these symbols will last you a lifetime unless you go through and you puncture one. But that's very, very rare.